So how do we use candlestick patterns when we're trading the stock market? It could be any market, it could be the US market or anyone. This is the ultimate beginner's guide. So if you want to know exactly how we do it, when do you actually use candlestick, at which stage should you use it, right? Watch this video all the way to the end because this is the, the complete beginner's guide and I'm sure by the end of this video, you'll be absolutely clear. We will even go through some live charts and case studies how do we actually do it uh, combined with a framework on when it should come in hey guys joey here i'm um, top tier stockbroker and trader in singapore and i'm so excited to share with you this video so let's go ahead to dive into how we do it The first question is why do we want to use candlestick right so you know there are many kinds of uh, charts like you know bar charts line charts but why is it that we use candlestick that's the first one right so i would say that candlestick is more visual right? and gives a lot more information at a glance right compared to like a bar chart or a line chart right we just don't really show that much information and you know it's just much more colorful to look at candlestick itself so that's the first thing why you know most people use candlestick when they are trading right and also we need to know um, the data needed to form a candlestick so basically in a candlestick every single candlestick bar we just need four information that's it just for information and it will be the opening price of the stock um, the high of the stock the low of the stock and the closing price so this four information will give um, one candlestick right so that's it it's that simple right it's nothing complicated right so let me just go ahead to break it down for you right so we're going to look at candlestick bar of two to five days to form an opinion on the future price movement right so what happens is most people just like to look at one bar right so you don't just look at one candlestick bar by itself it, it doesn't make sense right you want to look at about two to five candlestick bar together with the big picture of like the trend uh, which zones does it add what's the support and resistance and all that um, that's where you can form an opinion on where it can potentially hit to so don't just look at like one bar by itself right it just doesn't make sense of course not to worry guys we'll cover this exactly how to do it step by step so just make sure you watch this video all the way to the end right so a green bar and a red bar so what what is the difference you know between like a green candlestick bar and a red candlestick bar very simple right so basically a green candlestick bar just means that um the price opens low and close higher that's it right so look at look at this green candlestick bar here so basically the opening price is lower so it opens lower and it closes higher right here right so it opens low and close higher this would be a green bar right so what about this like black line here and this black uh, down line on, on the bottom and the top what, what what are these lines right so very simple as i mentioned for candlestick we need like four data right so the closing price the opening price and the high of the day and the low of the day right so this would be what we call the lower shadow so for this green bar right you can see that this would be the low of the day this would be the low of the day and this would be the high of the day right here right so that's it with this four information we have a green bar because the closing price is higher than the opening price so what about the red bar so the red bar is pretty much uh, i would say a bearish right so red just means it close lower than the opening price right so it opens higher look at this right here the red bar opens higher and it closed lower so it's like green or red more bearish it would be the red one right because basically red is normally uh, that's what we use for bearish i mean and it opens higher and close lower so it means that sellers are pretty much coming back at the end to close it lower so red is definitely a bit more is more bearish right and green would be bullish all right and of course same thing look at this right here this would be the high of the day and this would be the low of the day right so we have a green bar and we have a red bar so that's it just uh, four data and we have a candlestick bar okay so a candlestick bar does not tell us the sequence of events uh, within the bar whether like the high or low came first so for example we, when we saw the green bar we have these four data points but we don't know whether it like you know went to a high and then it came back down and it, you know close at which you know, we, we don't know the sequence so right? what we know is just that the opening price the closing the high and the low we do not know the sequence of event all right um, a single candlestick bar can tell us something but we must combine it with like a few candlestick bar to get like a complete picture right so for more 
price action confirmation of course i'll come to that in a bit so not to worry all right so let me just show you what i mean by um like a sequence of event right so for example look at this right so it opens here for this green bar and it closes here but we wouldn't know like you know when it opened it actually like went down or you know it went up first and then it probably came back down and then it closed here we wouldn't know the sequence right we just know that at the end of the day it closes at this price that's it we wouldn't know uh, whether it did it come down first or it went up first and it closed at this price no we wouldn't know now, of course if you want to dig deeper into like the time and sales that's where you'll find out but a candlestick bar just tells us um basically these four data and it does not tell us the sequence okay so focus on the big picture first then we look at the candlestick bar so the thing is guys uh, most people like to just uh, focus on the candlestick bar like one bar or maybe like a three or five days bar that, that is that's good but we want to look at the big picture first right we want to look at where this candlestick bar is is happening is it like near a support is it in an uptrend if it's an uptrend which part of an uptrend are we all right so when we look at the big picture it is it, just much you know easier right it's just much better and it, it's harder to to lose money than by looking at the picture than just by looking at a bar and it's just we, we can see like a bullish bar at a, a selling area a selling zone like a resistance level and that's where selling can come back so it just doesn't um, tell us the big picture so we all look at the big picture on how we do it like the trend and all that which i'll cover um and we we'll look at some live case studies as well next one analyzing a single candlestick bar so what happens is now we want to look at like a single candlestick bar before we look at like a few days together all right so let's take a look at a single candlestick bar all right so just now we covered like a red bar red one is definitely a bit is more bearish right so there is this bar on the left here and there's this bar on the right so there's like a short body and a long body all right so what, what is the difference guys which do you think is more bearish is it like a short body so body just means the the red color the bar right here you can see like it's shorter and this is like a long body so which do you think is more bearish guys i would say it would be the the, the one that is in the, the longer the longer red bar right because basically red bar just means it opens higher and close lower so a longer body just means that you know it opens same thing opens high and close lower but sellers have to come in to push prices way lower or right? way lower all right because you have a long body that means push prices many 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 bits down and it closes much lower that's why we have a longer body so a long body is definitely a bit more bearish than the short body makes sense guys all right what about a green one yes just the opposite so we have like a short body and a long body so which is like more um bullish which is more bullish is it like the short body here or is it the longer body i would say it would be the long body same thing here the same concept because um it kind of like opens lower and buyers or i have to take prices up many many bits you know it comes buy up buy up buy up buy up and it closes much higher at a higher closing price so you know it shows that buyers are here all right and it's there to kind of like you know take out and buy up many many price level and that's why a longer body would be definitely more bullish than a short body right here so the longer the body all right the more intense the buying or selling pressure make sense guys so the longer the body that's where whether is it red that means it's more bearish if it's green that means it is more bullish okay so let's move on right so this we have this a uh, maru bozu so what is this so this is like a single candlestick bar so do you know we have all kinds of name for candlestick bars but don't really focus on the name what we want to do is we want to focus on the meaning right behind uh, the price section for that particular candlestick bar so once you understand the meaning it does not matter whether it's a maru bozu or maru Bu, i don't know what name is it but um that is where we can focus on um, the real concept behind right so what is a maru bozu basically um it just means that right here look at this right here so we have this red bar here and this is also a red bar right here so this is a um, red would be definitely bearish right but we have this this is the standard one so this is the same red bar on the right we have like the long uh, shadow on the upper end and we have a, a lower shadow at the, uh, the lower end as well so this would be the high of the day and the low of the day right? i think this is what we have covered the standard right so um we have another bar on the left and this you can see th there is like nothing there's nothing at the top and there is like nothing at the bottom there's no line so there's no high or there's no low right basically there is a high and a low but basically the high and the low are the same as the uh, opening price and the closing price so what do you guys think which do you think is more bearish right is it the one on the left or is it the one on the right what, what do you think two seconds 
Okay, good. Um, the answer would be the one on the left would be more bearish. So let me explain to you why. So what happens is this, right? So for this normal red bar here, you can see it opens, it went up, you know, go up high. That's the high of the day. The sellers came back, which is good anyway. Sellers came back, push it down, 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 down. Went to a low of the day and buyers came, you know, came in at the end of the day, push prices back up and it kind of closed right here. So, you know, buyers kind of came back at the day end and it didn't really close at the day end, right? It kind of like, you know, close higher a bit, right? And, and it kind of close at this point right here. But for this bar right here, which is called like a Maru Bozu, all right? We are seeing kind of like prices opening, all right? And then that's it, you know, sellers were totally in control throughout the entire day, right? So it opens here and the sellers, it didn't have a chance to like push up to, to the day high or something, right? It didn't have a chance, right? Once it opens, sellers came in and it sell, 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 right here and it closes at the day low, right? Buyers have no chance at all. It didn't even manage to like, you know, push down a bit and buyers, you know, hopefully uh, coming back at the day end to kind of like push prices just a few bits up. No, it didn't happen, right? Sellers just took over the entire trading session. It opens at the high and it closes at the day low, right? Buyers have no chance to even just push prices a bit. If it did, then this is what we'll see. But you can see it closes right at the day low, right? So that would be a Maru Bozu, which means that this would be definitely more bearish because sellers are totally in control during the entire trading session, right? So let's take a look at the green, right? Same thing, we have this green bar on the left, we have the green bar on the right. So on the right, we have the same thing, all right? We have the high of the day and the low of the day. So very quickly, in this green Maru Bozu, all right? We have seen that it opens lower, same thing, opens low. So green just means open low, close high, so opens low, close high, you know, and buyers will totally in control. Same concept like the red bar, it opens low, buyers came in, buy, 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 push price all the way up, and it closes right here at the high, of the day sellers just did not have a chance to even just push prices down a bit right it's just closes right at the high of the day right here right so this green bar right here with no um higher upper shadow and no lower shadow there's no wicks shadow is also called wicks some people call it wicks it does not matter basically there is no shadow it is this this maru uh, bozu green bar is definitely more bullish than the bar on the right okay so no upper and lower shadows are seen all right and the high and lows are the open and close of the bar all right so buyers and sellers are in control throughout all right from opening to closing so definitely when you see a bar with like no upper shadow no lower shadow whether it's green or red that is definitely a bit more bearish or bullish okay let's move on Okay, so next one, what about a bar, all right, a single candlestick bar, which is like a long shadow seen on either the top or the bottom. So what we have been seeing just now is just like a normal red and blue bar with uh, uh, you know, a normal shadow at the top and normal shadow at the bottom. What, what about if they have like a long shadow at the top, a long shadow at the bottom, what does it mean? All right, so let me show you what I mean. So this is a bar right here. You can see that in this case, uh, we have this bar is a red bar right so red bar is definitely a bit more bearish but we have this red bar and there's a long upper shadow right here all right and you can see a shorter shadow at the bottom okay and we compared with this bar on the right as well this is just a normal red bar again all right but then you know, look at this the upper shadow is the same the lower shadow is the same so the question i have for you guys is which do you think is more bearish so both of them are red right so they're pretty much bearish right but which is more bearish the one with the upper um shadow or right, the longer upper shadow or the one on the right which is just like the normal shadow what, what do you think guys two seconds okay good so the answer would be the one on the left which would be more bearish right? and let me explain to you why all right please look at this right so in this red bar right here you can see it's just the standard right opens higher close lower and we have the up high of the day the low of the day so prices kind of like went up and down and opens high close low but in this case right here with the long apple shadow on the left same thing the bar in terms of the body is the same right it kind of like opens here and close lower that's that's the reason why it's red but at the day within the day itself you can see that it kind of opens okay opens here 
went up, 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 up. I mean, that is the high of the day, right? So we have to, you know, the high of the day, buyers have to come in and push price up. So it kind of like opens, went up, 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 buyers were in control probably the early part of the day. But you know what happens was seller came back and pushed prices down, 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 and it closes right here at the bottom, right? So with a long upper shadow, it just means that, um, Yes, the day high was much, much higher, but sellers came back you know, just after the morning session or just at the day end and pushed prices way lower, way lower. I mean, sellers have to come in to really push price all the way back down. You know, how much buyers have pushed up in a day, sellers came back to push it all the way back down and it closes right at this same spot. So for a red bar with a long upper shadow, that is definitely a bit more bearish right, compared to the one which is just a, a normal shadow on the upper end and the lower end. I hope it makes sense, guys. So understand the meaning behind the bar so that you don't have to, you know, memorize the names for each of the different bar, right? So same thing, let's go look at the bullish one. So green bar, bullish, bullish, right? So it opens lower and close higher. So that's why there's a green bar. But look at this right here. That's, that's where we have a long lower shadow. This is just like a normal shadow. So which is more bullish? Yes, exactly the one on the left right here because same thing it opens lower all right sellers came back you know to push prices down 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 you know we thought they might crash and go all the way down but what happens buyers came back um you know after the selling buyers came back and that's where they take prices up 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 and it closes higher so how you know how many bits that seller took it down in a day the buyers came back and push it way up all the way you know getting all the sellers out the way pushing price all the way back up and even closing at a higher price right here so a bar right here with a long lower shadow would be more bullish than a bar with just the normal shadow make sense guys good so we are able to see who dominated in the early part of trading, but later, okay, at the end of the day, on the afternoon, it got beaten at the at the day end, all right? And so the longer upper shadow, right here, the longer upper shadow, it's more, what? It's more, I would say, bearish, right? The long upper shadow is more bearish, because you can see right here, prices came down, 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 and closed over. And what happens is the longer, lower shadow right here longer lower shadow is more i would say bullish okay so this is how we look at the shadow and kind of like understand the meaning behind a longer upper shadow or a longer lower shadow okay let's move on okay let's take a look at another single candlestick bar and this is called what we call a spinning top so what what is a spinning top right so it sounds really complicated but trust me it's not right so we have this uh, red bar right here and a green bar all right and what happens you can see that this is just a red and a green bar but we have a long lower and upper shadows with like a small body you can see this is the body so it opens high close low open low close higher that's why it's green and in terms of the upper shadow and the lower shadow it's like yes quite a long shadow all right on either end all right so what does this mean, all right? Um, it means there's indecision between buyers and sellers. Because you can see right here, because of a, a body right in the center, that means it opens um, higher, all right? It went up or went down, and then finally it closed lower. But because of this higher, much, much longer um, upper shadow and lower um, shadow, you can see that it's indecision because buyers kind of like took prices up, sellers came back, pushed it back down. In the end, it closes right somewhere around the center, all right? So it's indecision between buyers and sellers, right? So in terms of demand and supply, it, it can go either way. So when we talk about indecision, it means that there is a potential change in the prior short-term trend, right? Where, where we need a bit more confirmation. So when we see this at the right zones, right? For, for example, when you are hit it up, 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 and we see this, it could be a signal whereby the trend might come like turn in the short term from like up, to maybe down because we need a bit more confirmation but this can be a good signal of a trend reversal in the short term all right same thing when we see this bar um right at the bottom prices have like pushed down 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 over the past few days or few weeks and when we see this right at the bottom near like a support level that's where we can potentially see a trend reversal all right um whereby the trend might turn from down to up right so of course we look at a few case studies examples right at the end so if you are looking at this video and you're enjoying it so far do make sure you watch it all the way to the end because by looking at those case studies i think you will uh, appreciate even better how we use this uh, spin tops or, or marubuzo and whatever names we call it okay let's go on okay doji yes yeah, so that is another single uh, candlestick bar like share view so pretty much the opening and the closing price 
are the same or equal. Let me show you what I mean, right? So there's a sense of indecision between buyers and sellers, and neither will able to wrestle control, right? So let me show you what is a doji. Okay, so a potential reversal in trend is on the cards, but of course we need a bit more confirmation. So something like a spinning top, we need a bit more confirmation, but it shows that there are some indecision between buyers and sellers. Neither side is able to win and eventually be close right in the center. All right, and, and that's where there could be a potential reversal if we see it at the right zones. So let me show you what I mean by a doji, right? whereby the opening and closing price are the same. Right? So for most of the candlestick bar, which we see just like I see, like it's a red bar and, and a green bar, right? Red just means open high, close low. Green just means open low and close high. But look at this bar right here, right? Why aren't there any colors? Why, why is it not green or why is it not red, right? Uh, the reason is because it opens and closes at the same price, right? So there's no like a, a body because it opens and closes at the same price. So there's no red and green color. So that's when we see this, right? So what this means is that this is a doji. That means it went up. This is the high of the day. This is a, the low of the day, all right? And it opens and closes at the same price. So there's no red and there's no green color. So this is a doji, which means of which means like indecision, right? Whereby you know it could lead to a potential reversal when we see this, right? Because buyers and sellers were not able to take prices either closing at a day high or day low, all right? It just closes right in the center and, and nobody won, okay? okay? So this can be a signal of a potential reversal in the short term trend. Okay, next one, a long leg doji, right? So this will definitely be a bit more, I would say, more indecision, right? A, a better signal than this uh, on the, the bar on the left because this one right here, same thing, opening price, closing price, the same, but we have a much longer upper shadow and a much longer lower shadow. So this is like a long leg doji, required, which I would say will be stronger uh, than the uh, doji, the neutral doji on the left, right? So this is number one, number two, let's go on to number three. Right here, so this is what we call like a gravestone doji. As I say, you don't have to memorize the name, guys. Uh, what you want to do is to understand the concept of this doji. Right, so this doji right here, same thing. Opening price, closing price is the same, right? There's no color at all. There's no green and red. And uh, what what do you think is this like bearish or bullish? What do you think, guys? Remember we talked about the the longer upper shadow just now, right? Whereby there was a red bar with longer upper shadow. What what do you think? A longer upper shadow is more bearish i would say yes let me explain to you right so same thing it opens and closes at the same price so when it opens it went up 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 all the way up right day high and sellers came back and pushed it all the way back down again down 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 and then it closes at the same price right here so this would be a bit more i would say bearish if you see it right at the resistance zone uh whereby you know that it could really lead to a potential reversal in terms of the short term trend right here this would be the gravestone doji, right? Next one, this would be just the opposite. We call it like a dragonfly doji. I have no idea why we have this name, but basically it's one whereby same thing, opening price and closing price in the same. And we have prices like on my opening, went down, 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 sellers push prices down, 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 but buyers came up, came back at the day end on the afternoon, push it back up, 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 bought, 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 and closes right here at the same price right here so this would be a bit more bullish if we see that some of those really good support levels especially if the trend is up we're trying to look at some examples later we can find this all right then um this would be a really really good signal for a potential reversal from like a down to an upwards direction in the short term okay so now let's take a look at like two or more candlestick bars combined so previously we we're just looking at like one candlestick bar by itself, whether is it like a doji or whether is it like a long upper shadow and all that, we're just looking at one candlestick bar. So right now we're going to combine in like two or more candlestick bar to kind of like form a bit of a better picture, right? Rather than just looking at one bar. All right, so let's take like some pattern and this is would be what I call the engulfing pattern, right? The engulfing pattern right here. So we have what we call a bearish engulfing pattern right here at this red bar. So we're looking at like two candlestick bars. You can see on the first day, this is like a normal green bar. It kind of like opens low and closes higher. But on the second day, we have this red bar right here. And this is what we call together the bearish engulfing pattern. Whereby on this red bar, you can see it kind of like opens higher. So you can see when it opens on the second day higher, higher than the previous first day, way higher, right? So it kind of like opens here, 
prices went up all right at the day high and what happens like the sellers came back and sell 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 down 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 went all the way to the low and closes right here all right and it closes way below all right the low of the first day so okay this was the high of the day this is the low of the day this was the first day and it closes all the way even lower than the low of the first day because it opens higher higher than the first day bar way higher and sellers came in and prices went all the way down and closes lower even below the low of the first day so that is a bearish engulfing pattern whereby you know sellers just came back and totally engulf right the, the first day but you can see it's like it's like engulfing it's like way taller than the first day but this is what we call engulfing because it like totally engulfs it uh, way higher it opens closes way lower and that's what we call an engulfing pattern the bearish engulfing pattern what about the bullish engulfing pattern so same thing on the first day with red bar opens high close low and on the second day this is the green bar right here it comes like opens lower lower then the first day but way lower look at this right this was a low and it opens lower all right went down a bit but buyers came back pa, 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 buy 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 went all the way up and closes higher right here above the high of the first day bar so the high of the first day was here it closes way above the high so same thing it's a bullish and galvin look at this green bar it completely covers or engulfs the first day bar that's why they call it a bullish and galvin pattern Okay, can so let's move on. What about this, right? We look at the shooting star, a shooting star. So what, what is a shooting star? A shooting star is this bar right here at the top and the center. You can see that this is where we have like probably prices pushing up, 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 and then we see like a shooting star right at the top at this bar, right? So that is what we call a bearish shooting star. And look at this bearish shooting star. What, what do you guys think? Is it is it like bearish or, or, or bullish, right? I mean, we, we talk about the long upper shadow right long upper shadow is more bearish right exactly so look at this right so we kind of like opens here went up 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 at the day high and sellers came back and push it down 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 and closes right at the day low right so buyers won in the morning they won all right but sellers came back in the afternoon or the day end and push it all the way back down and it closes right here at the day low so that would be definitely a bit more bearish the fact that it's a long upper shadow and also the fact that we can't close at the day low so that is a bearish shooting star all right so when we sound like see this bar right at the top near resistance definitely you want to be careful we can potentially see uh the selling coming back and prices might start to become retrace lower probably towards a, a new support level okay so that would be a shooting start so when you come like break this um lead, the low of the day right here that's where we can potentially see more selling coming in with this low of the day broken okay so that would be the bearish shooting start all right let me just show you a bigger picture of how it works right so this bearish shooting star is right here. you can see price starting to move up 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 and we see this bearish shooting star right here so we can also draw what we call like the low of the day which puts form a bit of a support right here and when prices were to break below the low of this bearish shooting star right here that's where we can uh, potentially see a bit more downside whereby uh, the selling can continue but you might start to hit down uh, and retrace back down to the next lower support so this is a bearish shooting star we want to be careful if you sit right at the top of the resistance especially if prices have rallied by a lot and we see this that's where you want to take some profit or protect your profits you don't want to just hold it and let it go all the way back down and you're like back to square one all right make sure you have a plan to get out and if you actually do see this and we do see some good uh price actions that confirms this move and it does break below the low of this very shooting star okay let's move on next one would be a bullish hammer so hammer would be something like the shooting star but it's just opposite right here right so this would be the hammer so we're looking at a few candlestick bar together all right and this will be the hammer we have like a bit of resistance here same thing this is the high of the day all right but before i talk about it look at this um hammer so why, why do we call it a hammer so take a look at this bar so it, this this bar in the center it looks like a hammer can you see it's like a long lower shadow it's something like a hammer whereby you can grab and um, you know like hit people right so I, that's how i remember that this is happening. i used to like kind of mix up what is the name but hammer would be this right whereby there's a long lower shadow and you can hold it and you can just whack okay okay so this is the bullish hammer right here so same thing it opens lower 
you know, prices went down, 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 down. And what happens was in the afternoon or day end, buyers came up, 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 pushes prices up, up, up. They buy, they bought, they bought, they bought. And it closes right here at a day high. So that would be a bullish bar, a bullish bar, all right, whereby, you know, we have a long lower shadow and of course it closes right at the day high. That is a hammer, all right, a hammer, okay? So of course, we can also draw what we call a resistance line right here. That's the day high. And if prices were to break above this line, it could potentially see a, a reversal back up from like a down to an upwards direction. Right? So if you see this right at a, a support level, you know, it could be a good entry, kind of like time your entry to get into right the rebound high. So let's take a look at the bigger picture again uh, for bullish hammer right here. Okay, so the same thing, right? So prices may have came, come down, right? Down, 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 down. And right here, when we see a, a bullish hammer, look at this right here, right at the bottom. And hopefully, we see it at this really good support zone, all right, a support level whereby it's been holding for many months or many years. And we do see this, right? That is a really, really good uh, indication of a potential reversal backup, right? So that is definitely a very good um, signal, right? And definitely, you want to take a look at it. So this is a red line, which is like the day high. And if prices to break that level on some really good volume, that is where we can see the reversal happening from like a downwards direction in the short term to an upwards direction in the short term as well. That's where we can potentially see a rebound and you can uh, kind of like position yourself to ride the upside. Okay, so now that we have pretty much covered like the fundamentals of each candlestick, uh, whether the, the meaning behind the candlestick bar, whether it's like two bars or one bar, now we will look at the framework to actually make everything make sense and look at the big picture. So we, I call it the ultimate trend trading framework right here. Okay, and let's take a look at it. Right? So we want to take trades along with the trend. When we look to buy in an uptrend, or when we look to short in a downtrend, all right? So we don't want to like go against the trend. I mean, it's, it's harder to be wrong if you are with the trend. Make sense? I think all of you have heard, heard, heard of this before. You know, the trend is your friend. Perfect, right? So you want to know, um, you want to be along with the trend, not against it, right? Because if you're against it, it's, you, you can probably go wrong, all right? So that is the first thing, right? You want to take trades along with the trend. So later we look at the case studies to look at how do we actually determine the trend very quickly, all right? And so take trades near the support and resistance zone. So when you are in an uptrend, that's good. You want to take a look at a buying, all right? Taking long positions in an uptrend. But the question is, where do you want to buy in an uptrend? Is this, I mean, even though it's uptrend, but you don't want to just buy anywhere, right? You want to buy probably at some of those good support levels, support zones. Um, and, and that's where if you see some really good candles near there, that's how you can kind of like position yourself to ride the upside. All right, so you want to spot the candlestick patterns at this zone, which is near the support and resistance level for any price confirmation. So guys, if you like what you have seen so far, I would appreciate if you can give me an early thumbs up. It will definitely help out the YouTube channel. And of course, just go ahead to smash, right? Bam, 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 smash the subscribe button so you will not miss out on any videos like I do like this, all right? So let's move on. And next, we're gonna look at some real life examples and case studies. So I'll pull up some live charts we look at the past and kind of like see if you can spot any of these candlestick patterns that I talk about. Is there like a doji? Is there like a marubuzu and all that? Or a bullish or bearish engulfing? We'll try to spot that and see if we can tell anything, right? So take note of where you are seeing them as well. As I say, guys, you need to know where you are seeing the candlestick bar. You don't want to sit anywhere. You want to sit at the right areas, at the right zones. Uh, of course, looking at the trend as well, like I've mentioned. Okay, so yes, candlestick bars, guys, is only one part of the equation, right? You don't want to just look at a chart and just look at bar like day by day, and it, it, it just doesn't make sense just by looking at a bar itself. You want to see it at the right places, at the right zones, at the right areas, right? So that is just one part of the equation. You want to look at the total framework, the full framework to actually kind of make make sense out of this candlestick bar, right? So let's take a look at some live examples right now. So this is case study number one. I right? have this counter called UMC here, all right? And it's pretty much in a very good long-term uptrend. So as I mentioned, you wanna look at the big picture first. We look at the trend. So in terms of the longer term, that has been in a very, very strong uptrend. And we did manage to see a bit of support coming in at about that $8 level, right? So let's see if we can spot any good, you know, candlestick at some of those good zones. So as I mentioned, $8, would be a support level that we've been holding, all right, for you know, like more than a year. Or I can see we've rebounded, 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 and there are many, many candles right over here at this level. And somewhere recently, look at this. This is just um, another candle, a bullish candle. And what what would this name be, right, for this particular candle? It would be something like a 
a hammer, all right? You can see something like a hammer. We got um, whereby we have a long lower shadow, all right? Long lower shadow. So kind of like you know, sellers came in, push prices back down, all right? And, but what happens is at the end of the day, buyers came back and take prices all the way back up, up, and it closes somewhere near the top. So this is something like the hammer that I talk about, which is a good bullish candle, all right? And especially if we see it at those really good support, like for example, this $8 level, you can see it rebounded like one, two, three, four, five. And when we see this bullish candle right here, the hammer, the bullish hammer, that can be a good signal whereby, you know, buyers are serious and they're back out to kind of like take prices higher, all right? And a potential rebound in, in, in the short term, a potential rebound can continue. All right, so this is what happened, kind of like rebounded and we formed a bit of resistance. You can see it went up, came back down and we see another candle right here as well. Look at this. This is something like a spinning top, a, a bit like a, a hammer as well. You can see we have a long lower shadow. All right, so remember, we don't really need to care about the names, right? But as I say, care about the candle, exactly how it works. So for a long lower shadow, all right, it's a bit more bullish. It means that buyers kind of came out at the day end and pushed prices back up and kind of closed somewhere at the high right here all right so this is another something like a hammer or spin top you call it right and it was formed right at the nine dollars right the nine dollars support level you can see when we broke this nine dollars went up came back down and we saw this right here and this is where the 20 days moving average which would provide a bit of a support as well in terms of the uptrend in the short term all right so it kind of rebounded from this nine dollars level this is where we saw um this um spinning top at the support level can indicate a potential reversal. All right, so let's take a look at another case study. Okay, so this is an, another case study, um, Apple right here, all right, and you can see that um, Apple has been in a really good long-term uptrend as well. One of those really good counters you want to kind of load up on dips to write the uptrend in the long term, right? And let's see if we can spot any of those um, patterns in terms of the candlestick bar right here. You can see um, this was what happened somewhere in 2020. We kind of broke that 76. Um, level came all the way down uh, due to the current situation that is happening around the world all right and what happens was right here uh, at this support level so this was a support level somewhere around that 56 level 56 dollars and we saw something right here this is what we call um, i would say something like a hammer i mean yes it could be green in color that would be battle all right it would be if it's green in color that would be uh, uh, something like hammer but we did see this candle right here and it was like a long lower shadow all right which means that the buyers count came back at the day end to push prices back up all right and that's where we started to see this reversal really started so after this candle and it happened right at this support level at that 56 55 dollars was the resistance turn support we saw this candle and that's where the rebound really started for apple right this is the candle right here on the 23rd of march 2020 all right let's see if we can spot another candle for Apple, right? Um, maybe somewhere around here. Look at this, right? So price started to push up, 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 and um, I would say, look at this right here. Does it look like what we have covered, right? So we kind of like push up all the way, and we saw this really bearish candle. Of course, it kind of like looks something similar to the um, bearish engulfing pattern. Remember the bearish engulfing pattern, whereby we see a red bar completely engulfing, all right, the, the first day bar, right? Of course, this doesn't really clearly look like, but you know, you can see that bar. sellers kind of came back, they opened way higher and closed um, somewhere right in the center. Of course, it would be better if you can close all the way below, all right, the low of the first day bar, something like a bearish engulfing, but this is also something bearish. So we see this started to push down, 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 and started to see a bit of a support, a bit of consolidation um, right here, right? Let me just move on and see if you can spot anything um, yep, somewhere around here as well, you can see price went up. All right, so a bit of consolidation from this range, about $100, $105 to 130 up, down, up, down. All right, and right here, I think somewhere around here, near this support, this is where the 100 days uh, moving average line is as well. You can see 100 days moving average line. We saw this bar, something like a spinning top. You can see a bit of indecision, as I mentioned, between buyers and sellers. You can see it went up, went down and it kind of closed somewhere in the center and it's a red, red bar but we have like a long upper shadow and a long lower shadow which shows a bit of indecision and a potential reversal especially if we see it right at the support level and also right at this area where the 100 days moving average line is right so it kind of like broke up again you can see we have rebounded up and started to consolidate so that is kind of like a kind of like a reversal signal as well Okay, let's see if there's any other signal. Okay, I think somewhere around here on the, um, yeah, look at this right here. 
25th of Jan, right? 25th of Jan, 2021. This is another signal. You can see this was where you know, it pushed up all right, to a new all-time high, all-time high. And look at this bar right here. Look at this bar right here, guys. On the 25th of Jan, 2021, right at this level, 145. And that's where we saw this bar came out right at the top, right? This is something like a, a doji, right? Something like a doji, you know, very, very long, lower shadow, um, uh, kind of like a decent upper shadow as well, or right? it kind of close somewhere around the upper end, right? So very, very short body, I would say, right? So a doji, which would be something like what we call indecision, right? A potential reversal back down, especially if prices have you know, kind of like extended and pushed up too much and rallied a lot. That's where if we see this right at the top, it could be a potential um, signal of more selling or reversal back down. That's exactly what happened when we saw this. So it consolidated a few days, but then it broke down and the selling really started for Apple right here. Okay, so yes, we have kind of like seen a few um, candlesticks that we have covered. All right, some of them might not look as nice as what we have seen, like the bearish and the bullish and galloping, but I didn't kind of get a point, right? We want to understand basically the meaning behind the particular candle rather than just, you know, base it on the name. Okay, this counter square, um, one of the case study like share view and you can see very, very strong uptrend, I would say for square. All right, and let's see if we can see any of those candles that we um, discussed previously, right? So I think somewhere, um, very, very good uptrend started to consolidate. And I would say that's, that's where we started to see a bit of support coming in about 190 to 200. You can see we have been holding above this support level uh, for about, I would say five, six months now. All right, and let's see if you can see any candles right here. I think somewhere around the, 27 of Jan, look at this bar right here. Let me just zoom it in for you guys. Right here, right? So this is what we call a spinning top, right? Remember, a spinning top right at the bottom, somewhere near the support level. You can see we, this was the resistance at about 190 to 200. We broke it, and now this would be somewhere near the support turn, uh, sorry, the resistance turn support, and we saw this candle coming out right here. A spinning top, which can indicate a potential reversal. So yes, price managed to break up above that 210, and the upside really started up, 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 went up here. And somewhere at the top, look at this. This is on the 16th of Feb, and we did see another, uh, look at this, right? This is something like a spinning top as well. So we have like what, but in this case now, we have like a longer, upper shadow right so a longer upper shadow right at the resistance and this would be the 280 level right 280 level same thing guys it can indicate a potential reversal and if we see it here all right it can lead to probably a bit more weakness if the support level would break down like the 270 or the 260 um, level right so you kind of like you know saw this right at the top at the resistance level broke down all right and started to push down 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 right here okay and somewhere around the i would say maybe second Okay, this that's another like doji right here. So you can see went up, the doji came back down, and on the fifth of March right here, look at this. This is quite a, I would say a long lower shadow, right? So went all the way down, bias came back and pushed prices back up. So of course it's a red bar. I would pre prefer it if it's like a green bar and it's something like a hammer, right? But this can also indicate a bit of strength. That means this support right here, because we are seeing this bar right at this support level, which is the same thing, right? This was the support rebounded. We see this bar right here coming in around that 190, 200 level. So you need, can indicate that this support from like 190, 200 is probably here to stay, right? It's quite a strong support and you know, buyers kind of like came back to push prices all the way back up and come like close, you know, lower. I mean, it opened higher, close lower, but the fact is buyers came back and pushed prices all the way back up. So that's a good sign that um, it could be a potential reversal from this support level. So yeah, start to consolidate, push up, and that's where the reversal started right here. Okay, so this is another, I would say, something like a hammer. Of course, it's red in color, but we have a really good long lower shadow right here. Okay, let's take a look and see if we can find another one. So what would be, um, let's go ahead to see. Okay, I think somewhere around here, this would be on the um, 14th of April. So remember, this was the resistance at about 280, all right, prices have been like kept below. You can see we kind of near this resistance level. And if we do see any bearish candles near the 280 resistance, look at this, right? We, as I mentioned just now, we touch it. We, we have this little spinning top. We came back down and now we can't approach this level again, 280. So if we see like a bearish candle there again at near 280, 270, then you want to be careful because that's where we can potentially see a reversal like what has happened over here just about um, two months back all right so this would be a bearish candle look at this right so we have like price pushing up green candle green 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 
and right at the resistance at 280 we saw a red candle and this is like a red candle with a very long red body makes sense guys i would say something like a bearish engulfing of course for bearish engulfing it comes like open higher right way above the high of the first day and then close lower lower than the low of the first day. so yeah it comes kind of like close lower but in terms of the opening it would be better if you can like open way higher above the high of the first day but but in this case it still looks bearish i mean you know the sellers really just push prices all the way down you know, taking it all the way down way lower than the previous day low right so something like a bearish and galving and you can see it started to consolidate broke the 260 support and the selling started to happen right now we are pretty much back to some consolidation so let's take a look at this counter called plug power right so very very strong uptrend i would say somewhere in 2020 um you know prices really started to rally when it broke that 20 dollars pushed up 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 and went to like 72 dollars in a couple of months and so they consolidate and went back down right so the trend was really strong but you know after that you know, there were some signs of weakness in terms of the trend turning from like an uptrend to a downtrend you can see this 20 days moving average started to turn down with prices kind of breaking below the 20 days moving average so when we see this that's a sign of the trend changing and turning from up to down and you want to be careful probably have a plan to get out all right but let's see if you can see any candles uh, that can actually indicate the potential reversal right so you can see prices started to push up 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 really strong rally very very strong gap up gap up and you know when prices have extended too much or just rallied like you know more than 20 30 percent over the like few weeks or months that's where you want to be careful if you see any reversal candle and look at this right here i think this is where we had like a reversal candle something like a spinning top right here at the top around that 70 to 70 dollars 72 dollars um resistance level all right something like a spinning top so when we see this that is a sign whereby you know it could be a potential reversal you want to take some profit get out maybe raise your stop loss to protect your profit right so when we see this you know yeah it started to push down a bit consolidate but then when it broke that 60 dollars right here that's where the selling really started so that could be a sign of a bit of weakness or a reversal potentially happening soon okay and then of course we need a bit more confirmation when we were to break a support level like this would be the 60 support level we were holding for like a month and it broke and that's where the selling accelerated and of course this green line started to turn down with prices below the green line which is the 20 days moving average right so let's see if you can spot any other candle right so yeah there is what we call like something like a hammer you can see long lower shadow it kind of rebounded from here that 40 dollars yeah it started to rebound a bit but you know sellers came back and pushed it back down so down 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 so you can see a bit of trend as i say the trend started to turn the green line the 20 days moving average um, went down as well below the 100 days moving average right that's a sign of the downtrend me you know potentially starting to, to form up again right so that's where you want to be careful as well of course we broke the support level at that 40 dollars right so the push down 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 and look at this right so this was the resistance level as i mentioned the 20 dollars that really started the rally all the way up and when we come approach this $20, let me just zoom in for you, $20, you can see this was quite, uh, I would say, look at this guy, I think this is quite clear. What, what is this bar right here? So $20 was a resistance turn support. And when we hit it to that $20 level, right, we saw this green bar. And what does it look like, guys? It looks like the, the bullish and galving pattern exactly so when we see a bullish and galving pattern at one of those really key support levels so 20 dollars is like a psychological support level and that was the level that whereby the rally really started some resistance it turned to a really strong psychological support and when we see like a bullish candle a bullish and galving pattern right here because it's really strong bullish and galving and it happened right at the 20 dollars mark it could be a sign where, you know, whereby you know buyers might be ready to come back right to come kind of bargain hunt to kind of uh, take prices uh, higher potential reversal from down to up so that was what happened right so when we saw this bullish and galving was like consolidating a few days and eventually it broke back up above that 24 a bit of resistance at 24 went above that 24 and you really started from 24 pop, 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 all the way to about 34 and then now it is like coming back down so another case study amazon right uh right here and you can see we have been consolidating for like about a year from that 2009 to around that 3600 level so uptrend wise and long term it still looks okay but we are just consolidating sideways for like a year right so let's see if you can spot any of those candles right which can indicate like a rebound or a reversal and all that right so i think we'll say somewhere around 
um, here on the um, okay so like you see support is right here you can see this is a very very strong support at 2009 rebounded 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 here so if we see any bullish candle right at this support level it can indicate a potential reversal let's see if you can spot any of those right so okay i think somewhere around here look at this right here so this was a support level as i say 2009 and somewhere around here on the um, 5th of march 2021 let me just zoom it in for you look at this right guys so yeah this kind of like happened right at the support level 5th of march 2021 look at this bar right here guys um what, what do you think is it like a, a bullish bar or a, a bearish bar right so we have like what we call a really long lower shadow so it looks something like a hammer of course hammer would be like green in color it comes close higher but in this case it's a red bar but we have a really long lower shadow right at this support at the 2000 900 level so when we see this it's a sign that this support is here to stay right you know buyers are coming out just at the day end or in the afternoon to take prices back up and close it way up way up right at the top and, and that's a sign of strength especially at this support so when we see this it could be a good potential opportunity to come kind of get in again to ride the rebound so it started to consolidate as the rebound really started to happen all the way up right here and this was the resistance i would say somewhere around the 3006 to 3 five five zero and let's see if you can speak, see another um, bearish candle right at the resistance level look at this bar look this bar right here on the 30th of april 2021 you can see it is something like what we call uh it, it's not really like a bearish engulfing because it didn't really like engulf the first day bar but it's quite a long red body all right and uh, we kind of like call this what we call a, a dark cloud cover that cloud cover so you come like opens higher and close somewhere right in the center of course i've not covered that particular candle but you can't get the point right basically we have at the resistance level 3550 we got like a bearish candle a long red body with prices kind of like opening higher you can see open higher went up but sellers came back and pushed prices down 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 and it closes way lower and we got like a red body with a pretty long body right and then kind of like broke that a bit of support you can see a bit of support here at about three four four zero it broke and the selling really began right here okay so that would be somewhere uh on the i would say um 30th of april right so the, let me see if we can spot any other uh, candles right, recently so it started to consolidate and I would say somewhere around here we did like see another support forming you can see about 3000 uh 3180 to 3002 we got like another look at this right something like a doji right something like a doji very very short body right at the support level 3180 to 3002 and we saw this right at the support started to rebound up and this is where we are now so something like a doji right so this is a same thing a doji with a long upper and long lower shadow which can means a bit of indecision and a potential reversal in the short term especially if we break back up above like the near term resistance level in this case it would be like the 3220 3, you can see when it broke this this was a quite a bullish candle and the rally really started for like one two three four five six days so another stock that had a really good uptrend somewhere in 2020 you can see prices really rallying up holding well above the 100 days uh moving average line so it started to push up 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 and somewhere around 2021 there were some signs of weakness or the trend kind of like turning down and this is where we are now so let's see if we can you know spot any kind of like candles at some of those good levels for a reversal and what does it mean okay so i think somewhere around here this would be somewhere on the um, 2nd of september you can see prices rallied right here so it was like uh, pushing to an all-time high um, somewhere around here and we saw this little candle right so this candle is i would say something like a, a bit of a, a shooting star all right a shooting star of someone with something with a long upper shadow a long upper shadow you see prices started to went up and came back down and closed somewhere at the bottom so this is something like a shooting star a bearish shooting star which you talk about and then you kind of broke down the 70 dollar support and prices went all the way down from like 70 to that 52 and then we find the support coming back again so yes this is something like a shooting star a one with a long upper shadow so guys when we see like a long upper shadow that's where you want to be careful it's not a good candle it shows that sellers are coming out at the end of the day to push prices way lower okay let's see if you can find another one right so somewhere around um here i think somewhere here all right so this was a bit of a support let me just go ahead to draw this line right here you can see this is a bit of a support level so it's like the resistance it broke up went back down and eventually we, we broke up above this support and resistance up and then came back down and we saw this candle right here right this was a candle and it looks something 
like uh, I would say something like a hammer but of course the hammer is green in color this is red in color but we had like a long lower shadow you can see this long lower shadow also kind of like touches this 100 days moving average line that has been pointing up and prices have been holding above this red line all this while so yeah we saw it you know this candle right here at that $60 horizontal support is number one number two is right at this 100 days moving average line which provides a bit of a dynamic support in the mid to long term so when we saw this candle here it's a good signal that buyers are pretty much prepared already to kind of take prices higher um, if we do get above this the high of this day right so this could be a good signal or trigger we call it and when we see like prices kind of like pushes up again pushing up above this day the high or maybe a next um, near term resistance at about 65 you can see the rally really started up 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 went all the way up and that's where we saw a bit of consolidation a bit of weakness here you can see uh, it was like consolidating from like 88 so let me just quick to draw another line right here so this would be another um, support turn resistance you can see about 88 rebounded come kind of broke down you can see we kind of like you know try to get above but sellers came back and pushed prices back down so 88 would be a bit of a resistance right now so it was a support turn resistance we broke down all right let me just go ahead to turn this in red in color so that would be a major resistance right and you can see the red line 100 days moving average is like kind of like pointing down so there are some signs of weakness uh somewhere around the March 2021, when you know the, the you know the when the moving average is starting to turn down, look at this, the green line is pointing down, prices have went below the green line, and also um, this green line have crossed below the red line, 100 days moving average with the red line pointing down as well. So anything below this 88, I would say it looks a bit more bearish, right, compared to last year, whereby it was a really good uptrend. So yes, guys, we have gone through a few live case studies. So I want to just go through the framework again so you know exactly how it works, right? So first of all, we want to take trades along with the trend right so if it's an uptrend you want to think about buying if it's like a downtrend you want to think about shorting so we try not to go against the trend so when we look at a trend we use like moving averages so we can draw what we call upward sloping channel support lines and also downward sloping channel resistance right so you want to find out a bit more i'll probably put a link around this video where you can attend one of those free live web class which i'm running all right and i'll probably put a link just below this video right so next one you want to take trades near the support and resistance level all right so we have like horizontal support and resistance level so that's where we spot any of those candlestick patterns happening at these zones that's where we want to give a bit more weight to it and right? that's where it can potentially lead to like a reversal or more strength and all that like what we have covered in the case study so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have watched this video all the way to the end and you have like enjoyed it and you have gained value i would appreciate if you can give me a thumbs up it will definitely help out the youtube channel and of course smash the subscribe button as well so you will not miss out on any videos like this and thank you so much for doing it right so as i say if you want to find a bit more on the framework behind the trend trading strategy and maybe even how we use a system to guide us on entry and exit uh go ahead to attend one of those free live web class i'll probably put the link around this video click on that all right attend one of those free webinar all right and as well I'll share with you a bit more on the framework and how we actually do it so i look forward to see you in one of those free um, webinar and uh, my name is joey thank you so much for being here and also let me know in the comments below right what is your biggest takeaway in this video if you have any questions go ahead to place them in the comments i will definitely do my best to answer uh, any of the questions that you have right so go ahead do it right leave some comments below engage all right and i will speak to you real soon